Hi, my name is Colin Chu. I'm a media composer and professor of audio and music technology at University of Silicon Valley. 大家好 ，Welcome to So My Gone Cyberport. And today's topic is audio without limit: secret of game music productions for indie and AAA studios. So on this presentations, I want to talk about how music is being. Put together at the、uh, video games and the process of working for composer, so that way in the future when when any of you game developers who wants to work with a composer, then you know how to you know how to interact with a composer. So that's basically what the this presentation is is about. So video games music has been existing since. I would say around nineteen sixties, but it was until nineteen eighty five when Super Mario Bros came out. This is probably the this was probably the first game that took music very very serious. So, to talk more about Super Mario, this piece of games, there is a Super Mario's theme that is very very catchy at the beginning, but not super repetitive. And then at around fifty four seconds, you're gonna notice the stars theme kicks in. So when the star themes kicks in, you're gonna hear the music sounds a little bit at a faster space. And because Super Mario gets stronger, right? You instead of jumping and smash the monster down, you can Super Mario can just walk and hit the monster and kill them, right? So let's take let's take a look at that transition really really quick, and then we can discuss a little bit more about it. So you can see, like when Super Mario picks up the star, Super Mario got a lot stronger. Just smash the monsters, and you need another piece of music to fade it in. And Super Mario, Super Mario theme faded out naturally. We call that crossfade in music. So that's how you program this kind of transition in the game. So I mean, it's not. I mean, for for working with a composer, it's not like you just tell the composer write the piece of music. You have to really plan out how many pieces of music you need for a stage. Like in stage one dash one, we need two pieces of music there, and then you have to talk about what kind of style of the music you want to go with it to really capture the mood in the games. So writing for writing music for video games takes a lot of planning before to I mean to make this happen. And lastly, at around thirty one seconds, when super you know how Super Mario picks up the coins and the mushroom, and there was something called a stinger comes out. So many of you probably don't know what a stinger is in video games. Stinger is a very short piece of music, layer on top of the current Super Mario's. I mean, layer on top of the current music track. So in this case, you hear the Super Mario themes keep on going. As the player plays the game, and when Super Mario picks up the mushroom, you're gonna hear a small musical tune on top of the current music track, which is called the Stingers. So when Super Mario picks up the mushroom, Super Mario's size got a lot bigger and stronger, right? So when when the character gets a little bit stronger in the game, usually you want to have by picking up an item, you want to have a musical elements that reflect this. Changes and that's what Stinger is. So let's take a look at that. <laughs> So you can hear that Stingers. That is a Stingers when Super Mario picks up a mushroom. So when you plan for writing for video games, you have to know. That aside from adding the music tracks in each stage of the game, you have to plan out: Do we need stingers? If we need it, what kind of sound you need, right? By the way, the stingers always coming on. If by the way, if for those of you who knows music, like Super Mario is is in four, four, one, two, three, four. The stingers always coming on the next beat of the current music, so that way, 
it sounds more musical and more organic. If the stinger just randomly comes, comes in on top of the current music track, it's gonna sound a little bit weird. So just to let you know that that's basically how the stinger comes in. Yeah, and if the stinger doesn't really sync in with the current music tracks, on the on the next beat when stinger comes in it's gonna sound a little bit weird regardless you know music or not if you don't make the stinger comes in on the next beat of the current music it's just it's gonna sound really weird by the way lastly and sound effect in in video games is just basically like wood blocks you know how super mario jumps up and breaks the wood blocks though that kind of sound design will just come in immediately because that has that has no pitch in it right i mean that kind of sound that is not like CDFG, you can't sense it, right? So that's basically how how Super Mario works. So I mean, for this two PowerPoint slide, I just want to give you guys an idea that music takes planning, and you have to talk about the com you have to talk to the composers to talk about transitions. How many tracks do we need? Do we need stingers? That type of thing. Now I want to talk about the software called WYS briefly. For those of you who were Let's say you you finish your, your piece of you finish all the music for the games. What do you do? What's the next step? In 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 a lot of AAA game studios or indie games, at least in America, from what I know, we use the WY software to implement the music tracks into the games. So I just want to briefly show you guys a little bit so you have an idea how that looks like. So for 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 being a com for being a video games com composer, he or she, including myself, you have to do the programming to aside from writing the music. Yeah, so I, I don't think the programming is that complicated, but I just want to show you a little bit of this. So interactive music hierarchy in the games this is where you implement all the musical tracks in it. So um, this is just a demo I want to I put together to show you that. So you know how the Super Mario theme loop around because you don't know when the player is gonna end. So you have to keep looping the song until the infinitely until the player finish the game. So you can see that you can see that the the theme just loop around right. And the victory and death does not need to to loop around because when when a characters die. You just hear the death music for like two seconds. When when Super Mario, for example, when Super Mario clear the stage, you just gonna hear the Super Mario theme play the victory themes just play for like two seconds, right? So those two you don't need looping. I mean after I mean you I mean the programming is after you're plucking all the musical tracks into it, you have to also say theme transition to victory music because when you win, your theme will fade it out, victory music will fade in. And when you accidentally die in the game, you might have another life, right? You need to transition back to the theme when the player comes back on the stage, right? And when the when the I mean, so this one is when the characters, when you're playing the current track of music and you die, you transition to a death track, and then from death tr from death track, you might have another life, and you need to transition back to the current music theme of that stage so that's the programming there and you know what's interesting that so you know a theme to a victory the victory needs to come in on the next beat because because you're not going to wait for the whole theme to finish playing you're not i mean if you finish super mario right now you're not going to let the music play for another 30 seconds and victory theme comes in no that's gonna, no one's going to wait for that so that's when you program the next beat but if that music is very short which you probably set the exit source to execute that means like that so when super mario die for example the death music is only like two or three seconds then execute means you play for the whole two to three seconds which is the entire death track and then afterward you transition back to the theme so you can see like there's a lot of planning i mean you're not gonna put the death music to play the first if the death music is like three seconds long you're not just gonna play you're not gonna play the first second and jump back to the theme right it's sound too it sounded too rushed so in this case you want to play the whole three seconds by setting to execute or instead of next beat and then transition to the theme so that way you, you will get a more organic result when you transition to the game all right for example i'm going to show you this i'm going to show you this really really quick up here so i'm going to have the theme play and then afterward i'm going to transition to death 
So that way you hear that I did program the transitions. I mean, programming transitions, you have to program the fade in and fade out, how long it's going to fade in, how fast the fade out comes out. I mean, there's a lot of programming and testing in, in video games, just to let you guys know. So let me show you this really quick. So you can see like, this is the transition you will hear in the actual game that the theme plays. And if you accidentally die, the death music fade in on the next beat. And then the death music will play the whole thing because I set the death theme to XX source, XX source to execute. Anyway, so I hope this gets you an idea how video game works. You have to program the transitions and once by the way, pro learning this program, I would say it would take you about two to three months to master it. It's not it's not like computer science. It won't take it doesn't take that long. So if I can learn it as a classical composer, you guys can learn it too. All right. Yeah, so that's basically that right there. And I just want to let you guys know that to give you guys a little bit of time frame for bigger games like triple A games or like Final Fantasy. Super Smash Brothers, like those bigger games usually take about years, months or years. So the composer probably needs another uh, needs another year or two or even three years to compose all the music. Unless you have multiple composers composing for the games. However, if you're composing for like mobile phones, it probably takes like five, maybe five to eight weeks because mobile phone games are really, really short, right? So I want to talk about, I want to tell you about the time frame. So when you guys have a chance to work with a professional composer later, you know what, you know what to expect on that. Yeah. And I, and then I want to talk about, I want to finish today by talking about like, oh, in video games, we actually f format the sheet music. I mean, after we compose video games, you actually do format the sheet music and record with a full orchestra. I'm so sorry. I do have a, a little bit messy on the desktop. So yeah, this is not my, this is just my personal computer. So it's, it's a little bit messy, my apologies on that. But I wanna show you an example. This is one of the games I composed like uh, not that long ago. And and this are the music score for the, for the, for the game. So this is the opening theme of the one of one of the games I have score and it's called the Heroes theme. I recorded in Budapest in Hungary. By the way, they 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 do have a Chinatown. Check it out if you have a chance. They they do have people who speak Chinese there, surprisingly, right? So you can see like why I compose a sheet of music aside from Aside from writing that song, I, I mean, aside from writing the song for the video games, you have to pro you have to notate all the notes for, you can see like I notate a full orchestra score. And then I extract the part like French horns, mm, trumpets, I do and percussions, timpani, you can see like I write every single part on it. So, so yeah, so I mean, that's another skill set like a composer has to do and recording with a full orchestra is also costly. So I'm going to show you this really quick. So that's my conclusion for the presentation. I just want you guys to know that when music is done, you record it with a full orchestra. So anyway, so I hope you guys learned something how music actually works in the video games within this 15 minutes videos. And if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach me out at truecalling at yahoo.com.hk. 
or email me on my personal website. So it's nice meeting all of you. And please contact me if you have any questions about video games music. I'd be happy to answer all your questions. And that concludes my presentations. Thank you.